Hey, my name's Jeff, and I'm always identifying ways to solve problems. But my latest challenge has been to turbocharge a, a dapper repository that works well with domain aggregates. It'll be a great prototype for my future projects, and, and hopefully yours as well. So if you enjoy learning about C-sharp, SQL Server, software development, subscribe to my channel. I've got some new content that I'm working on that explains the differences between spans of T and memory of T, and how to use these new performance boosting features in C-sharp. Which brings me to today's topic, improving repository performance with sorting. So let's start off by looking at our aggregate. The idea is that we'll make one call to the database and get back a result set for each of the different classes. The challenge is to use those result sets to fully populate the aggregates. Dapper handles some of this, but it'll populate the name property of the customer, but it can't populate the list of orders. So we need to populate that ch those child and grandchild collections. And there's an opportunity to improve that performance in that mapping process. So what I've done is I've created a fake repository that generates its own set of data locally to demonstrate. So I can take SQL Server out of the equation. Now inside the get customers method, I'm using a for each loop that looks over the result set and uses link to call out the children that should be assigned to the parent. It's really no different from having nested for each loops, but what I wanna draw your attention to is that each item in the collection has to be checked. All right, so take a look at this picture. When the children are sorted by their identity, I have to loop through each one to determine if the child should be added to the parents collection. And there's no way to reduce that set of work. If there's 100 parents and there's 10 children for each parent, I'm gonna to have to carry, compare IDs 100,000 times. I don't wanna do that work, I don't need to do that work. My first thought was, why don't I leverage the power of a link group by extension method and I can put those results in a dictionary. So if I group the children by their parent ID, I can have sliced the child collection into sublist, and those are what I need. Here's my method to populate the customer aggregates with a dictionary. The first step is to take that child collection and to use the link group by extension uh, to group these by the parent ID, in this case, customer ID. And once that's done, I can convert this to a dictionary and use those to populate the parent property with the child collection. But let's take a look at this uh, from a benchmarking standpoint and see how well that performs. So caveat emptor, the repository is not pulling data from SQL, but the set of data that it's working with includes 100 customers with 10 orders each and 10 order light items per order to give you an idea of what the data looks like. But you can see that there's a pretty substantial improvement in performance when we use a dictionary, a 10x improvement. But you know, if you really think about what is that doing, we're really utilizing this group by clause and we're just sticking it in the dictionary as a place to store it. We're actually doing some extra allocations in using this dictionary that we probably don't need. Really, we're just using sorting. So. I thought maybe we could go ahead and apply some different strategies and use sorting as a method to improve the performance of the repository. Whenever you're doing benchmarking, it's good to establish a baseline metric for how you expect it to perform normally. And so what I've done is introduced the use of spans in some of these methods. So I wanted to go ahead and use the traditional looping over a parent, looping over all the children, but using a span to establish how long that would take. So I've gone ahead and included this method uh, along with the benchmarks. But now let's get on to that sorting aspect. This should hopefully give you a notion of what we're trying to do. We're gonna iterate once across that child collection of orders. And so when we do, we'll start at the beginning and we'll keep going until we find a mismatch. And then once we do, we can go ahead and assign this one to the parent. Then we can continue iterating over and then we see a change. So we can take that and assign it to the other parent. And then we can continue on. When we get to the end of the list, now we can take this and assign it to their parent. So when we do this, we only have to iterate across the child collection once. All right, let's look at some code that will actually implement this idea. So the first thing I really do need is I need a way to sort child collections by their parent ID. And so I've created a class that will implement the iCompare interface and do that comparison for me. 
Now spans uh, allow you to execute a sorting operation. And in this case, I can uh, provide that class that implements iCompare. And so this is actually relatively simple for me. The more interesting part of this is really, how do I go ahead and iterate across that child collection and establish those ranges uh, that would be applied to the parent object? Well, what I'll do is I'll go ahead and I'll loop over the parent, in this case orders, and I'll have established a position for the child collection index. And what I'll do is every time I iterate across the child collection, if that child object is equal to the parent object, I'm just going to go ahead and add it to the parent object and then increment the child index. And I'll just keep looping through across that until I get to the point where I've completed it and there's no, there's no longer any more parent objects. That's the function to populate the aggregates with a sorted span. Take note that, the, that I'm just using an add operation on those collections. And there's actually a different option when you're using spans and that is to use the slice function. So I've also added another one that does basically the same thing, uh, but instead of using a collection.add method, I'm going to use a collection.add range and I'm going to pull a slice of the span using a start and a length uh, from that child collection. So I'm gonna include those in the benchmark results as well. So let's get those running. All right, so let's take a look at this benchmark data. I think the first thing that stands out when we look at the amount of time it took to execute those functions is that our base case of pulling back the aggregates using or not using a span, they're basically the same. There's really no practical difference. As soon as we implement a dictionary, now we've got some benefit to that and we can see a big performance improvement. But if we go ahead and we just utilize a span and we sort it, now we get the big performance jump. So I think the big takeaway here is that sorting really makes a big difference in the performance of this operation. All right, so let's take a look at the memory that gets allocated for each of these different methods. You can see that the standard get and the get using a dictionary are the highest ones. And that would kind of make sense because as soon as we can utilize a span, we're using existing memory that's already been allocated to sort it and to uh, apply those subsets to the parent object. So we're gonna have a lot of memory savings when we're using those spans. And so spans are going to improve the memory consumption that we're utilizing in our functions. So that's the big walk away for the memory allocations. Now, before we go farther, I think it's important to just recognize the unit of measurement on the time. These are very small amounts of time. And when you compare that to how much time gets spent to go out to an out of process SQL server and pull back data, th these are tiny. So the big question I think you should ask yourself is, when are these things going to be useful? And I think in testing it with SQL server, it is actually substantial. There, is a, there are cases where this does make sense. If I'm pulling back a hundred customers from a SQL server and I'm populating those large object graphs, then this sorting process makes a noticeable difference. Sometimes it will be a 2x and almost 3x improvement in performance on the overall process of the repository. So it, it is substantial. Um, but again, those are with large sets of data. So I think the big walk away in my mind is that there are going to be times where you're pulling back a bunch of data for maybe a dashboard or a landing page. And in those cases, you're gonna want the performance because the operations are very costly. If you're just pulling back a single aggregate and it's a fairly narrow uh, slice of data, then this is probably not worthwhile. So something to put into your toolbox and use it when appropriate. Thanks for listening, and uh, I hope I've uh, given you some ideas about how you can improve the performance of your repositories or, or your code in general. Uh, as always, uh, please subscribe to my channel and keep on listening. Thank you.